Ugh, I always drink my water bottle very aggressively. Hey guys, it's Sarah, and today I'm bringing to you another tier ranking video. In the last one, a few people did say that they'd want to see the rest of the books I read this year wrapped up in that format, so I thought, why not give the people what they want? And before we get into the video, I do want to say that this video is being sponsored yet again by my friends at Ana Luisa. First and foremost, my favorite thing about Ana Luisa is that they have managed to become 100% carbon neutral in 2020 while maintaining really fair prices. All of their pieces start at $39, which I think is a super fair price considering the quality. You can just tell that the pieces are long lasting and they're made out of good metals. I personally have very sensitive ears and so I have to be very careful about what I put in them and I have never had a problem wearing their jewelry. I also love their necklaces. They don't tarnish, they don't change color, they don't turn your neck green. They're absolutely fantastic. I love that they cater to the US as well as international because I know sometimes when I do other sponsorships they're a US only thing but we can all enjoy this one. I'm wearing two of the pieces that I chose for this collaboration. First being this little butterfly necklace. It is so dainty and sweet and delicate and I absolutely Absolutely love it. I think it fits really well in with my wardrobe. I love wearing low cut things with it and just having it be this little like sparkly thing just like in my collarbone. I just, I love it. It looks so adorable. I also picked out these super trendy hoops that are super cute. I love the heaviness of them and that they just kind of are a statement piece. I also picked out this pair of celestial huggy earrings. I like wearing them in my second hole. And as you can see in this video, I have paired them with the earrings that I got last time from Ana Luisa. I know we're getting really close to Christmas and I think that Ana Luisa would be a fantastic gift for someone in your life or even just a gift to yourself. And so if you are interested, check the link down below. All right, let's get into this tier ranking. So first, let's go over the categories. First, we have for books that are absolutely amazing, we have talented, brilliant, incredible, amazing, show-stopping, spectacular, never the same, totally unique. The next tier is longest yeah boy ever. Yeah, boy! And this is for books that obviously were pretty good. Not quite talented, unique, show stopping, etc. I forgot the order of how you say that. Not quite that, but still really good, and they really deserve that longest yeah, boy. Our middle tier is. Okay. Obviously, that's for books that are just okay. I think that's pretty self explanatory. And then our second to worst here is. Um, ciao. Anyway, so. And that's for books that are just uh, not good, and I prefer to forget that I read them. And finally, our very worst tier is. Go back to Party City where you belong. And if you're a Drag Race fan, you will know that iconic moment and you will know that it is not a good thing to be told to go back to Party City and it is very much an insult and I just want those books to just get, get out of my life. I'm gonna be looking down for most of this video as I deal with the tier ranking, but yeah, let's just get into it. Okay, so the first book we have here is Layer of Dreams. This was a reread. As many of you know, The Diviners is one of my favorite series of all time. I literally have a tattoo for it. And I did this reread with Monica and Emma just because the fourth book in the series was coming out. And I'm gonna have to say that this is um, talented, brilliant, incredible, show-stopping, unique. I'm gonna get it wrong every time, but it does go in that top tier. Then we have Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare. This is the first book in the Last Hour series. And I want to put this in talented, brilliant, incredible, show stopping, etc., etc., um, because I just love the Shadowhunter world. But if I'm being realistic based on how I, much I enjoyed this book, I'm going to say it's longest yeah boy ever. I do think that the next books in the series might make it to that top tier. I think this one just dragged a little bit in the beginning. There was a lot of, you know, exposition introducing all the characters and stuff. And I enjoyed seeing the people from the Infernal Devices, but I kind of was like, what's going on for a little bit. So that's why it goes in that tier. Next up, we have Station Eleven. <laughs> why did I say like that? I don't know why. I'm gonna have to say that Station Eleven is gonna go in um, Child Anyways so because I found it to be quite forgettable. I actually forgot I read it until I was like getting these books together for this video. It is just boring. I don't know why it's so highly rated by so many people. It's a post-apocalyptic book about a pandemic, so it was a little bit on the nose to be reading it in 2020, but that didn't really bother me. It was more so the writing and the storytelling. I It had like a huge cast of characters and every chapter would like bounce between different perspectives. And every time I started liking one character, we would like jump like 10 years in the future um, because it took place like right before the pandemic and then like 
many years after the pandemic. Yeah, I don't know. I just didn't love the storytelling. I didn't love that I never got to stay with one character for very long and that kind of narrative always annoys me. Next up we have Before the Devil Breaks You, which is the third book in the Diviners series. And you know what's funny is I used to think that this was talented, brilliant, incredible, blah, 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 blah. But upon my second reading, I actually liked Layer of Dreams so much more. So I'm gonna put this in Longest Yeah Boy Ever. It's still a very good installation, installment, installment, that's the word. I don't know, I didn't love it as much the second time that I read it, but I still love it. So I want it to be in one of those top tiers, you know? But we're being realistic on this channel. And then lastly, in that series, I read The King of Crows by Libra Bray, which was the fourth and final book in the Diviner series. And I hate to say it, I hate to say it, but I think she needs to go in um chow anyway. So I, I hate saying that, I hate it. I was so disappointed by this conclusion. Like, I think I rated it three stars, which I guess would make it the okay tier. But I think upon reflection, being away from this book, I get really disappointed by how the series ended. I found it to be really, really drawn out. The last, I think, quarter of the book was when everything happened. And because she had taken so long setting everything up in the first three quarters of the book, the ending was super rushed and I just really didn't enjoy it, which I feel like is blasphemy to say because I love the Diviners. And I hate how most series have bad series enders because it always makes you like taint your opinion of the rest of the series. But I still stand by what I said earlier in the video, which is that you should read the Diviner series. Even though I didn't love the third book, honestly, part of me wants to put it in the okay tier just because I love Libra Bray and I love the series. I'm trying to think, okay, I'll, I'll think of it this way. I didn't hate it as much as like Station Eleven, so I don't think it should be on that same tier. I think I was just bitter for a second. I'm really sorry, Libba. I have repented and I put it in the third middle tier, okay? It's fine, it's fine. We have we have turned over a new leaf, it's great. Next up, we have American Gods by Neil Gaiman. I am gonna have to put this in um child anyway, so. I also don't know why American Gods is so highly rated. From what I've heard from people that love Neil Gaiman, this isn't even their favorite Neil Gaiman book, so I'm not really sure what the hype is around this one. I will say that I still want to watch the TV series that they based off of this. I haven't seen it yet. I read this because my office has a sci-fi fantasy book club, and so this was the pick, I think, last month or the month before. Um, I really liked the premise and I really enjoyed the beginning of this book. I really liked Shadow, the main character, um, but I wanna say like a quarter into the book, I started losing interest. And the only reason that I finished it is because of the Office Book Club. Pretty much all of my coworkers agreed with me that we really wanted it to be something that it wasn't. There was a lot of time jumping as far as like, not like super big like years, but like months would go by. And like, so the storytelling was very much like you'd be in one scenario and then the next chapter, it would be like four months later. And I felt like because of that, there was a lot of action that was missed. And then I also found the ending to be quite rushed and I just didn't love the pacing. So if any of you are Neil Gaiman fans and you have some recommendations for better like examples of Neil Gaiman's work. Do please let me know down below because I'd be really interested in reading other Neil Gaiman because I did like a lot of what he was putting down. I just didn't like it as a whole, if that makes sense. Next up, we have A Murderous Relation by Deanna Rayborn. And this is another one where um, I was quite disappointed with where the series went. This is the either the fourth or fifth book in the Veronica Speedwell series, which is about the titular character, Veronica Speedwell, who is a lepidopterist, which basically means she's like a butterfly scientist. And so she travels the world collecting butterfly species. And in the first book, she ends up getting into this sort of like murder mystery scenario with this guy named Stoker and they have to solve it together. And so through these four to five books, I, I, th I think this is the fifth book. Through these books, they have become close and they have solved mysteries together all throughout it. So I would describe it as like historical fiction mystery, if that makes sense. Um, and I really didn't like this installation. It's very similar to King of Crows where I wanna put it in Umchild anyway so because I'm bitter, but I'm gonna put it in okay because I love the series as a whole. Like I would highly recommend reading this. I probably will reread this series. Same with um, The Diviners. I feel like we've just been waiting a long ass time for Veronica and Stoker to fuck. And the payoff in this book was just so lackluster. Also the mystery of this book was really similar to the mystery of the first book. Like I get it, Deanna, we were five books in, but you can't think that I forgot what the first book was about. Like I feel like she really recycled a lot of what happened in the first book. I initially thought this was the last book in the series, but then someone said that there is supposed to be more. I really hope there are are because this really felt like a terrible conclusion. I really did not enjoy it. Um, it was it just the whole time I was like, 
I feel really bad, but I don't really like this. So I'm gonna keep it in the okay category, but just know in my heart that I'm not happy with it. Next up, we have Middle Game by Shauna McGuire. This is gonna go in Go Back to Party City Where You Belong. I absolutely hated this book. You may have heard me talk about this in other videos this year, but I just did not enjoy this book. I don't know why everyone loves it. It gave me bad feelings the whole time I was reading it. The only reason I finished it, and it's a long ass book, is because everyone that I respect loves it. Like Elias and Kayla from Books and Lala, it's like some of their favorite books of all time. Essentially, it's like a sci-fi-ish book about these twins that can like speak to each other telepathically, but they were raised separately. And there's like these people trying to keep them apart. And then the book is all about them finding ways to come back together. If you ever agree with my reading taste, I definitely don't think you'd like that book. But if you align more with like Kayla or Elias, I think Riley from Riley Marie also really loved it. There's a lot of people who love that book. So if you align more with them, do it. But if you and I hate similar books, don't do it because you will be angry and you will regret reading it. Next up, we have The Death of Mrs. Westaway by Ruth Ware. <sighs> This is gonna go in um child anyway. So I rated this, I think three stars, but I'm gonna put it in that second to last year because it was so boring and so forgettable. Like honestly, all of Ruth Ware's books, like that's the real tea. I don't know why people really love Ruth Ware. Also in general, I don't love British thrillers. Next we have I'm Thinking of Ending Things by Ian Reid. And I'm gonna put this in, okay, because it was fine. It was fine. I read it because the Netflix movie was about to come out and everybody was like, oh my God, such an eerie book. You'll love it, blah, blah, blah. It was fine. I will admit that I really liked the atmosphere it creates. It was very creepy and I liked the feeling of foreboding. I just found that the ending did not give me the payoff that I was looking for. I feel like I really got built up in that feeling of eeriness and I was really into it. And then the ending made me be like, what the fuck? So no. No, I'm gonna say no. Also, I did not watch the Netflix movie in the end because my roommate Austin watched it and he said that it sucked. Next up, we have Faux by Ian Reid. I don't really know why, but right after I read I'm Thinking of Ending Things, I was kind of on an Ian Reid kick and I was like, oh, I'll read his other book. And so Faux is a little bit different than I'm Thinking of Ending Things. I guess I never said what I'm Thinking of Ending Things about. Thinking of Ending Things is about this girl who goes home with her boyfriend for winter break to meet his parents. And there's something not right about his family when she goes home. And the whole time she's with him, she's been thinking of ending the relationship. And it's kind of about the weird vibes and feelings she gets when she goes to his home with his parents who don't act really normally. But Fo, on the other hand, is about this married couple who gets a random visit from a government agent that um, tells them that the husband of the relationship has to go to the moon, I think. I think it's the moon. Uh, to like do some work. He's been like chosen by the government and so he needs to leave but his wife has to stay behind and then they're gonna like take care of her. It's really a hard book to describe without giving anything away. Um, but yeah, basically it's just about how their relationship changes after he finds out that he needs to go to the moon and then the government agent like comes to stay with them and he has like bad energy. And so like it's told through the perspective of the husband um, who's kind of weird. I don't know how else to explain that, but I'm also gonna put that in okay. I actually would say that I liked it more than I'm thinking of ending things. It did not have the same eerie feeling and I wish that you could take the feelings that I'm thinking of ending things um, gave me and then put it on faux. But I think as far as storytelling and me being generally interested in what's going on, I preferred faux. Next up, we have Bunny, which is by Mona Awad. And I'm gonna put that in, go back to Party City where you belong. I fucking hated that book. <sighs> I read it because so many people said that it was cool and creepy and weird. They're not wrong, but I think that I have discovered that I was not made for weird books. Maybe that's why I also didn't like Middle Game because I would consider Middle Game a weird book. If you like odd things, I think you would like Bunny. I like my storytelling to be a little bit more concrete. Like I kind of want to know what's going on and not just constantly saying what the fuck every other second. But literally, if there ever was a what the fuck book, Bunny is that book. It didn't resonate with me. It's kind of like Heather's vibes. It's about this girl who goes to this writing college for her graduate degree. And there's this group of girls that call each other Bunny. They're kind of like popular girls. Like I said, picture the Heathers. And so she kind of gets included in their group this year at school and weird things happen with them. <laughs> I don't really know how else to describe it, but overall didn't love the book. I, the writing style was too flowery to the point where I was like, I don't really know what's going on. And also the characters were just obnoxious. The main character was obnoxious. I just didn't like anything about it. Next up, we have Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. And I'm gonna put this in, okay, because I really wanted to like this more than I did. I wanted to like it so bad. Like 
It started off and I was like, oh my God, this is gonna be a five star read. I love this so much better than The Night Circus. I just found the storytelling to have a lot of holes for my liking. Like, I like the concept. It's about this guy who discovers that his life is like written down in a book. And so he goes underground to this like secret book society. But basically the style of C, I just thought it was kind of boring and it didn't pay off quite the way I thought it was gonna be in the beginning. Next up we have In a Holidays by Christina Lauren. I think I gave this like three, three and a half stars on Goodreads. So I'm gonna put this in, okay. It was just okay. It was not my favorite Christina Lauren book, but it was definitely a good one. It's basically about this girl who goes to a cabin every Christmas with her family. And on this one Christmas, she finds out that the other family that owns the cabin is actually going to sell it. And so then she makes a wish that she could like save the Christmas experience that they have every year. And so then she wakes up again on the plane and she basically keeps repeating this same vacation until she figures out what the universe is trying to tell her. The love interest is someone that she grew up with. So we're brought into the story with her having had a crush on him since she was 13. And so we kind of just have to believe right off the bat that he's like a good guy. Overall though, I thought it was really cute. And I would definitely say it's worth a shot if you're looking for a Christmas read. I also think that Netflix should pick up this story and adapt it. Cause I think it would be a really cute like Christmas Netflix movie. And lastly, we have The Guest List by Lucy Foley and I'm gonna put this in Go Back to Party City Where You Belong. I think I gave it like two stars on Goodreads, but that book kind of sucked if we're being honest. It was on a lot of lists as like best thrillers of the year that you should definitely read. And I don't really get it. It just wasn't very good. Also, it was British. All the British thrillers suck. I I said it, I said it. But yeah, that brings us to the end of this tier ranking. I did not love that many books. As you can tell, I read a lot of okay books and then I only read like three books that I actually really enjoyed. Based on what you guys know that I like, please recommend books to me down below. I kind of want to read more books that I am really excited about in 2021. Thank you again to Anna Luisa for sponsoring this video. I will link all their information down below as well as the details of the sale. And I really hope that you guys will check them out because I absolutely love their jewelry. I just think it's super cute and it's been adding a lot to my outfits and my looks. Let me know down below if there are any videos that you particularly want me to make. I'm trying really hard in December and January on to become more consistent. I have quite a bit of content um, planned just because of my favorites and least favorites and all of that stuff, as well as trying to get more on top of posting regularly. So yeah, let me know if, what you wanna see from me. And yeah, thank you all so much for watching. You're all beautiful. Have a nice day.